Uh, hi everyone, and thanks for listening to me during lunch. Um, I'm Clément, and today I will talk uh, to you about uh, algebraic data types, as we call them ADTs, a bit easier to say. Uh, so, to start, uh, I'm working at Clément Cloud, we are an IT automation company, so you push your code and we make it run in production, either on uh, our uh, public cloud or on-premises. Uh, we have a few customers. Uh, one of them we like uh, is DevOx, of course. So uh, if you want to uh, discover it or talk about uh, platform as a service and deployment, just uh, ping me afterwards. I, I will be able to show you uh, stuff. Okay, so uh, I'm on Twitter. So if uh, you have uh, remarks or questions, don't hesitate to uh, put them on Twitter so that I can answer them and people not in the room will be able to, uh, to see it. Okay, so with that done, back to algebraic data types. So um, there are three, three words in algebraic data types. Um, type and data should be uh, okay for everyone. Uh, so algebraic data types are types uh, we use to uh, represent data. And we call them uh, algebraic because they have properties. Uh, they form uh, an algebra. I will explain that, of course. So uh, let's say I will start with uh, an example. Um, let's say we want to uh, model a DNS record. So uh, we know that the record has a type, so either CNAME, A, uh, quadruple A, TXT, stuff like that. Uh, we have the domain name for the record. Uh, if it's a C name, I get an alias. And if it's an IP address or a, like uh, a record, we have uh, an IP address. And finally, we have uh, TTL, uh, how long the resolvers can keep it in, in cache. There are many other things, but I just wanted to, to keep the example simple. So. We have uh, our record, our class representing our record, and if it's a C name, then I will alia uh, access the alias field to do things with it. Uh, if it's uh, a record, then I know that we'll have um, a IPv4 address and, uh, and stuff like that. Um, there is one uh, big problem with this modelization, is that you get an implicit subset of fields. It's not expressed in, in the code. It's in your head, and if you lose track of it, then you will have uh, errors at runtime because you are able to represent a state that doesn't make sense. Let's say I put a C name uh, in the type, and I don't put anything in the C name alias, and I put uh, IPv4 address. So I got a value, and I don't know what it means. It's supposed to be a C name, but it gives me an IPv4 address. Uh, another thing is that um, you don't have uh, exhaustivity with uh, with this. So, like in almost every code base I know, uh, at some point you have a case default in a switch, and uh, it shows an exception because the compiler uh, wouldn't be happy with that, and the message like, yeah, it, it should not happen because we somehow now know that we have uh, uh, handled all cases. And it's a bit sad because, like, in your mind, you know that it's, uh, it's done uh, on paper, on specification. Like, you know you've done everything, but you're not able to tell it to the compilers, though you have to add craft. So, a solution to, uh, to model that is that to use uh, algebraic data types. So algebraic data types, um, you can see them as uh, either things called product types and some types. I will start with a, a product type. A product type is a type putting two values of different types, arbitrary types, together. So you're bundling, bundling two values uh, with uh, each another. Uh, in some languages, uh, you can uh, call them tuples. Um, in other languages, they are called records. Uh, but since uh, we are DevOps, I will call them POJOs. So a POJO is 
the epitome of uh, product type. You have values uh, in the same, in the values together in, a, in one value with no behavior, just values next to one another. And we call them product types because if we look at types uh, uh, with the uh, mind of a uh, uh, set theoretician, a, a product type is the Cartesian products of uh, your types. So all the possible values of a tuple are the, all the combinations of the values of each type. And it also works uh, if we think about uh, the number of values in a type, or as we say, uh, its cardinality. For instance, if I have a tuple with two booleans, I know that a boolean has two value, hopefully, so a tuple with two booleans is two times two, four. So it's another way uh, the term product uh, means something in relation to, to product types. The other uh, part of algebraic data types uh, called sum types. Uh, they are present in less languages, uh, traditionally functional languages, but they're starting to come in Rust, Swift, stuff like that. A very simple version of a sum type is uh, available in, in Java. It's an enum. You're saying it's either this or this or this. Simple. So let's say I'm uh, moder moderating comments. A comment is either pending or accepted or rejected. And that's all it is. A sum type, uh, it goes a bit uh, further. Uh, an enum is just a tag. You can't have values in, uh, in your enum. Uh, a sum type is just either a value of type A or a value of type B. And the same way we were able to look at product types as products, um, the sum type is uh, a, a disjunction. Uh, let's say I have a status which has three values and uh, a boolean which has two, so the combination is five values. So if I want to, to model my TNS records with uh, some type, I can say I either have a C name with a TTL, a name and an alias, uh, or a record or something else. Uh, the idea there is that for each uh, possibility, I'm having uh, different uh, structures. But in the end, I know that each of these different structures represent the same th thing uh, at DNS records. <coughs> so it's really interesting uh, when modeling uh, JSON objects, for instance, where you have like um, heterogeneous uh, JSON objects, which represent the same entity in the, in the end. You can model them with, uh, with some types. So in Haskell, it's quite easy to do. There is direct support in the language. You declare a data type, and then it's done. Um, in Scala, it's a bit more verbose, but works as well. Um, you define uh, case classes, stuff you will hopefully have in uh, Java 10. Uh, and you have a siltrate. So siltrate is a bit like an interface, but uh, you can't extend it uh, outside of the file. So this is what gives you the exhaustivity check, and the compiler knows that there is only a finite, finite number of values. And in some way, you can even have ADTs in JavaScript. So JavaScript doesn't have type, but you can represent an ADT and the structure of an ADT in JavaScript. It won't give you type checking, but it will give you at least some tooling. OK, so. Um, there is a problem in the, um, in the first modelization I, I, I did, is that uh, TTL and name are always uh, in each case. So we can factor it out and have something which is a DNS record, and then uh, let's say a DNS record value, saying it's either A, quadruple A, and stuff like that. Uh, so algebraic data types, you can see them as a tree of product and some types with uh, alternation. Uh, and the property uh, saying that I was able to extract TTL and name from each alternative to put them at uh, the root level, uh, it's a property we'll know well uh, in uh, arithmetic. It's, it's called distributivity. I think we all know that 
a times b plus a times c is equal to uh, a times b plus c. And it's exactly the same with algebraic data types. And that's where they're interesting uh, is that we can use um, we we can use equations or rules of rewriting that we uh, know well from uh, arithmetic and directly use them on types without thinking about implementation stuff like that. It's very natural mathematical transformations. Another one is commutativity, so the order doesn't matter. Uh, it says that the number of the order of elements in a, in a tuple is not a structural information, like you can go from one to, to another. And a good exercise is to look at all the identities uh, you know from math, like saying a times one is a, uh, a plus zero is a, uh, and look at them uh, in the realm of types. So in this case, uh, the one corresponds to an interesting concept called the unit type, uh, which is a type with only one value. Uh, in Java, you would use uh, void. In Scala and other languages, you have proper type, the unit type saying, um, I don't ca carry any information, I just have one value. Uh, another one is associativity. And in terms of types, it gives you that you have the right to nest arbitrarily your tuples or um, split up your uh, disjunctions. And this is a, a fairly common property in in mass, and you can just use it uh, to, to do your data modelization wi without uh, thinking too much about it, because it's uh, something you, you know. And just to finish, my favorite part, uh, it's, it's not really about algebraic data types, but an extension. Uh, the same way we saw uh, product type as Cartesian products, uh, we can see functions, so function from A to B, um, it's somehow equivalent to b to the power of a. So if you count the number of possible functions, then uh, the number of possible functions from a to b is equals the number of elements in b to the power of uh, elements in a. And this, as uh, the properties and uh, exponents, are really interesting in, in terms of types. <coughs> so we know that c to the power of a times b is equals to is equal to c to the power of b and that to the power of a. And if we look at it in terms of types, it's a really interesting property. So let's say I have a function of a, a, a and b to c, and this property tells me that it's equivalent to a to b to c. And you may know it as curing. And I think it's a good way to get an intuition of why curing works and why it's useful. So what I did and what I encourage you to do is that like, look at all the properties you know uh, on addition and multiplication and try to see uh, how, what do they mean in terms of types. And when you're comfortable with going back and forth, then when you're modeling your entities and your, your objects, then you are able to, to think about mathematics and then go back to the realm of types and the mental overhead is way lower. So you're able to have a good intuition on what kind of data is equivalent to another one. And when you're modeling it, it can help you a lot. Thanks for your attention. And um, if you have questions, I have one minute left. So quick question, and then we can uh, discuss afterwards. Thank you. <laughs>